The Story of the Stone Mind. Yen, a Chinese Zen teacher, lived alone in a small temple in the country. One day, four traveling monks appeared and asked if they might make a fire in his yard and warm themselves. While they were building the fire, Yen heard them arguing about subjectivity and objectivity. He joined them and said, there is a big stone. Do you consider it to be inside or outside your mind? One of the monks replied, from the Buddhist viewpoint, everything is an objectification of the mind. So I would say that the stone is inside my mind. Oh, your head must feel very heavy, observed Hoyan, if you are carrying around a stone like that in your mind. This is a Zen koan from Zen Flesh, Zen Bones. And my name is Shauna McGrath. I am an astrologer based in California. And this is episode two of Astro Psyche, a podcast of depth psychological astrology. Today, I want to talk to you about looking at the moon in the birth chart as a relational um, informant as a relational object and how the moon in our birth chart um, really illuminates how it is that we relate to others, how we attach, how we connect, how we are intimate with other people, as well as how we are in the world, how we, um, how we interact with the world from an internal place. And uh, so I wanted to read this uh, section to you of the stone mind because that, um, so to back up a Zen koan, if you're not familiar with it, it's spelled K-O-A-N. It's sort of like a meditation riddle um, that Zen monks would um, tell these little mini stories to their students to have them reflect on them. Um, a common Zen koan is what is the sound of one hand clapping? And so it's kind of like something that uh, messes with your mind a bit, but in a good way. And I liked this story of the stone mind because when we look at the moon in astrology, the moon is our subjective experience. Um, in ancient astrology, the moon was related to your maternal figure. Um, sometimes that was mother or maybe the person who had that more maternal, nurturing, and caregiving um, experience in your life. Um, moon's also traditionally associated with women, with caretaking, nurturing, nourishment, um, feeding, eating, um, children as well to some extent in early childhood. Um, and in modern times, if you were to get an astrology reading um, from someone that is um, practicing like evolutionary astrology, let's say something more contemporary, um, they would say, oh, the moon is your mother, or it's also how you experienced your early childhood. And um, I think it's so important to, uh, to make the distinction between um, we can say that the moon is a symbol of a person's mother, but more specifically in your birth chart, it is how you experienced your mother or your maternal figure or your caregivers. Um, sometimes we have more um, than one maternal uh, caregiver. So um, what I mean by that is um, you may have siblings um, there may be siblings with like several different moon situations, like um, siblings may have totally different moon signs, moon house placements, moon aspects, um, and they will have the same mother possibly, but they would have different experiences of that same person. And so um, from a depth psychological perspective, this is because when a person is growing up, when they're very young, 
um, their experiences, a combination of their temperament as a, a little um, teeny baby, you know, they're going to have a certain kind of temperament that, again, we can go back to the astrology birth chart to look at to see what it may be like, as well as the environment and that interaction between um, what we typically call nature versus nurture. So your nature, your temperament, and then how that interacts with your environment, with the caregivers and the general um, living situation and holding environment that you experienced when you were very young. And um, so the moon is a symbol of how we experience the world and how we see the world both in our initial childhood experiences, especially from um, like zero to two and toddler years, um, but then also as we're adults as well. Um, so what I think is really cool is um, that I've been sitting with a lot and what was sort of the inspiration of this episode is I've been working a lot lately with youth, um, with um, young kids and um, youth in their adolescent years. And I've really seen how um, through working with kids, I can see this connection between the moon and what it is that they're experiencing and how the moon in our birth chart really shows how um, our early experiences are like the foundation of our relational situation as we're adults. Um, so, um, I felt like talking about that today because I think in the astrology world, when we think about relationships, we think about Venus, which, um, is important. Of course, the whole chart is important. Um, but if you're like, yeah, I want to know about my, um, my relationships, what kind of person I would be attracted to, or, um, what kind of people I attract into my life and, what I, you know, my attachment style, all that good stuff, we would naturally think of Venus because Venus is the um, planet of relationships. It's the planet of sex and sensuality. And it is at its core, what we find beautiful. Um, Venus tells us what we are attracted to. It tells us how we allure and how we draw in people, places, things, et cetera. It's that like, um, it's that like natural, sensual, desirous type of energy. And so of course that's like super connected to our relationships, whether that is um, romantic relationship or just the things that we enjoy in life. Um, now, I, I think that Venus is super important. The whole chart is important to look at when we're talking about relationships. Um, and when we're talking about intimate relationships, um, especially if you are in um, a romantic relationship or a relationship that's very intimate, that could even be close friends, that could be um, uh, family members, um, people that you work with even, or roommates and things like this. Um, I am also really looking at the moon when I'm working with clients on this, um, when we're talking about relationships, because the moon tells me about the core of your relational patterns. And um, it tells me also about like the psychic structure of how it is that you see the world, how it is that you um, relate to people and interact with people. Um, and so again, this is, um, this is looking at the chart, looking at the moon from a depth psychological perspective and um, depth psychology, um, depth as in, wow, that's deep, um, D-E-P-T-H. Uh, depth psychology is um, a psychology that is focused on unconscious um, patterns and unconscious um, structures in our psyches. So it's based on the idea that um, we're conscious of some things and that we are very unconscious of other things. 
and that through working with um, bringing unconsciousness into consciousness, that we can really work on um, feeling better and feeling more whole, um, that illuminating the unconscious brings in healing. Um, and what else do I want to say about that? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that um, in my um, in my opinion, this is a very relational process, and there's lots of different um, theories and modes of thought, even within depth psychology. Um, just like any field, there's lots of different opinions. Um, but my orientation is highly relational in that uh, we are relational creatures. And even though um, in Western society, we tend to focus on the individual experience and the individual, um, you know, we focus on autonomy and pulling yourself up from your bootstraps and that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, but in my experience, um, healing really comes through having um, a ha through having a relational experience that is therapeutic if that makes sense uh, and uh, yeah so <laughs> uh, that was a little side tangent anyways um, so I was I wanted to mention that because in when we talk about astrology we may say um, or you may hear, you know, if you're Googling your chart or you're looking up YouTube videos, you may hear um, people say that the moon is your emotions, that it's related to um, maybe your early upbringing, um, and that uh, I also would say moon is a symbol of how you cope with stress um, because the moon, especially the sign, um, tells us about what it is that you need as a unique individual to cope with stress and to feel soothed. Um, so, uh, so yes, the moon is definitely um, a symbol of your emotional nature. And um, I want to um, have us thinking about this from a depth psychological perspective in that the moon is not simply your emotions at a deeper level the moon is a symbol of your emotions um, because it tells us about how it is that you experience the world at such a young age. And it tells us about the foundations of your psyche, essentially. It tells us about um, the, the patterns and relationships that you experienced when you were very young that sort of like set that stage um, for the whole structure of, of your psyche, really. Um, and so I want to read you just this really little tidbit. Um, Ernest Wolf, um, who is a self-psychologist, um, which is a type of um, depth psychology, said that the self, so when I'm saying self in this context, it's um, self with a capital S, uh, the self may be defined as that psychological structure which makes its presence evident by providing one with a healthy sense of self, of self-esteem and well-being. And so um, this, like to me, this is the moon. And I know that um, in astrology, the sun is to a certain extent the self and self-esteem and the sun and the moon are inherently connected, right? Because of the phases. Um, and the, the moon to me in astrology is a symbol of this, the psychological structure. So um, for example, um, someone who uh, had an experience in their youth, in their childhood, where they really had to be um, an adult or take on adult roles very early on, that person is going to have a certain psychic structure oriented around um, being mature, being adult, taking care of business. Um, in, in an astrology chart, we may see this as a person having their moon within um, 
the sign of Capricorn or even Aquarius um, having aspects to Saturn or maybe having like a cluster of moon and planets in Capricorn or Aquarius. Um, we may even see Mars in there, but um, a person who, when I see that in a chart, like a person that has Capricorn or Aquarius and they are having, um, maybe the moon is conjunct Saturn or square Saturn or opposite, any of those like really strong um, dynamic aspects on the angles or conjunct um, with Saturn in particular, like that to me is a person who had a, an early experience moon that involved um, some, some sense of like where, um, how do I say this? Like where there wasn't a lot of emotional availability maybe from the, the caregivers um, that could be that maybe caregivers were not emotionally available. Maybe they weren't present because there was deployment or something like that. Um, maybe they simply worked a lot. Um, or maybe the, the person who has this placement, um, was an eldest child and they were put in a position for whatever reason, um, where they needed to, um, serve as sort of like, uh, a caretaker to their younger siblings. So things like this, again, this is not saying that if you have Capricorn moon or Aquarius moon that you will exactly have these experiences, but it's like, there's this flavor around um, having to grow up earlier than the normal or not normal, but earlier than um, would be expected via the cultural norm. Um, and so, so it's things like this. And so a person that had that experience, and, and maybe if you're listening, you, you did have this experience where you had to um, be very responsible or you were told um, to set a good example for your siblings or your cousins. Um, and then as an adult, we, um, we internalize these messages that we received. Uh, you know, set a good example. That's a, a great one where as an adult, we may have this like, oh, I need to really set a good example. I need to be on top of it. And that becomes a part of who you are. And um, I think that this is, it is what makes us who we are, like our early experiences. Uh, and so part of that is acknowledging that, again, making that conscious. And then the free will part of this equation with astrology, at least, um, but I think psychology as well is, okay, like, what do you want to do with that? Um, does that work for you? Are you in an environment where you have a good outlet for the way that you are? Um, but before we even get to that, I think the biggest piece is just acknowledging um, what it is that you experienced and, and um, reflecting on how your, um, most, how your most tender and vulnerable years in early childhood, how those experiences at that time relate to who you are now and how they relate to, um, your relationship and attachment dynamics now as an adult, um, it can be a very curious process, something that um, I think we can do over a lifetime. I always say that uh, the astrology chart, your astrology chart, you could study for a lifetime and still, um, still have a lot to learn. And I hope that we do do that. Um, so uh, The last part that, that I'll leave you with, and, and I'm curious how this lands with you. So um, the last part that I'll leave you with is that um, I think the moon can be so helpful to us because it can tell us about, um, it can help us do sort of a self-inquiry so that we can look back and say, okay, like how does my moon relate to what I've experienced, how does my moon relate to who I am? And I haven't gotten technical in this episode intentionally because I want this to be just more of like thinking about things. Um, 
And when I'm talking about looking at your moon and your birth chart, um, or if you're looking at other people's birth charts, you know, if, um, you um, are a person who is a therapist or a, um, or a um, massage worker, or you do any type of work with people, this might be interesting. Um, but to look at the moon and not just the moon sign and the moon house. Yes, those are very important. Um, and I'm always also looking at the aspects to the moon, um, especially outer planets uh, like Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, um, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars. And then, of course, I'm curious about um, Mercury and Venus um, and the moon phase. <clears throat> is important too. So, um, you know, someone born during a waxing crescent moon, that's going to be very different from like a last quarter phase or a waning balsamic moon, things like this. Um, and, and this can tell us again, like where we've come from, but also what the path forward is. So what is it that you need? Um, what, are the, what are the archetypal themes around your moon? Is there a theme of um, needing emotional expression? Is there a theme around lack of boundaries? Is there a theme um, around really needing to be seen and held and validated? And how can you um, arrange to have that for yourself through, especially through relationship. Um, so again, I, um, I want to emphasize that we're relational beings. And so when we have, um, ruptures in relationship, um, the healing and repair happens through relationship. So it's like, we're always going back to that. Um, so uh, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. Um, I'm curious, uh, you know, if you want to reflect or even if you want to reach out to me and let me know if this was helpful or if there's something more that you wish that I elaborated on. Um, but a reflection to leave you with is um, to do a little journaling around what were your most um, early and vivid childhood experiences what were the messages that you really remember hearing? Um, what were your relationships like? Um, what were your caregivers like with you? And how do those um, situations relate to your relationships now? What are some common threads there? Uh, and how may that thread in to your moon um, in your own personal birth chart? My name is Shauna McGrath. I am an astrologer and available for astrology readings and consultations. Um, again, I would love to hear from you if you enjoyed this podcast or if you're interested in a reading, you can find more information at my website, shaunamcgrath.com. That's S-H-A-W-N-A-M-C-G-R-A-T-H. Until next time, I am wishing you lots of love safety and health. Talk to you later.